far back as I can remember, I was sexually abused. And the sexual abuse went into child pornography. But as, as a little child, it was so natural to me to be in a sexual mode all the time that um, reaching out when I, I saw someone aroused was just a normal thing for me to do. My sexuality was never suppressed. I was never told that's wrong. I was never, you know, it was encouraged. So I just grew up thinking that was, that was the norm. With the abuse that I went through, it was as though um, my spirit was removed from it. You know, like it took flight. It, um, it was a safe place. One that was actually in flow while my body was being directed by other people and ended up, you know, being involved in things I had no way I was ever participated in. stripped of my clothing, I was allowed to wear tennis shoes, and told that I could have a head start and begin running before I would be hunted down. My exposure to it resulted in my believing I had no place to run and no place to hide. It seemed there were no limits to what could happen in my existence at that time. It was the most extreme, one of the most extreme situations I think ever. I ever survived. Greetings and salutations. Mark Phillips and Kathy O'Brien have been through a lot. Kathy has had some extraordinary experiences in the mind control program and Mark came along and pulled her out of the situation. So without further ado, if you will please give a warm round of applause to Mark Phillips and Kathy O'Brien. When I was a really young child growing up in Muskegon, Michigan, this would be the early 60s, I was born in 1957, my father had been sexually abusing me as far back as I can remember. And he often bragged of substituting his penis for my mother's nipple while I was an infant. So my sexuality was heightened from a very, very early age. And I also developed what is known as dissociative identity disorder. It was formally termed multiple personality disorder, but has since been redefined because it's not multiple personalities, but the shattering of a personality and a compartmentalization of memory, of trauma, too horrible to comprehend. Childhood sexual abuse is certainly too horrible to comprehend. There was no place for that in my mind. This Compartmentalization of memory was what the government was interested in because they figured that if a person couldn't think to bring to mind abuse, they wouldn't be able to think to bring to mind government secrets, government perversions, or anything else they wanted compartmentalized in the brain. My experience as a mind control slave on a White House Pentagon level was extreme. I was totally robotic. I had no capacity to think for myself. I didn't have any free thought whatsoever. I didn't even have the ability to question, to reason, or consciously comprehend what I was involved in. Why is that? This, this place is dangerous. 
and I'm not too pleased with, uh, with actually being here. I don't know how many times we've been in situations where we weren't sure if we were going to make it through it. I couldn't count. I can't. I can't either. But this is this is definitely definitely one of them. It's over the line. It's one of the worst. Because you, when you start this process, this is what gets everybody killed: is the investigation process, and that's just not cool. Um, we're in it. We're on the back of the tiger, and we can't get off. We've got to finish this.